YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about my favorite nail art supplies. So I have a little stash here of all of the nail art that I think about if I have a client coming in and I know that they're going to want to do a little bit of nail art today. These are the things that kind of automatically go through my mind as tools, as things that I might use for them, things that I might reach for first. So these are the things that I tend to start with. I kind of have this base this grand zero for nail art. And these are the things that I use and that I reach for. So I hope you enjoy this. I am going to try to mention each and everything where I've purchased it. If I'm not sure where I've purchased it, I'll let you know. Please feel free to comment down below and ask me any questions. If I'm not sure of something, I will direct you to someone that is. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. It means the world to me and my small channel. If you would like to see more from me, you can hit the little bell and it will notify you when I post since I don't always post on a schedule right now. I hope to in the new year, but stay tuned and we'll talk about some nail art. with kind of the basic. I have this, it's a piece of cork. It is actually one of my favorite things. I have a couple of these floating around right now. I have one on my desk that has my monomer and my polymer, my protein bond, and my little brush holder stays on it. Um, I can slide it around on the plexi on my table without any friction, but when I reach in, when I anchor to reach into my dish, to my shorter dishes, like my monomer dish, it's less likely that anything is going to slide. Not much slides on this, and I like that because I work quite quickly, and sometimes I feel a little clumsy, and I'll push things. Same as your UV light, if your clients seem to be pushing it when they're putting their hand in it, or if it seems to be sliding around any at all, you can pop one of these underneath of it. Um, I really like them, and I get them at the Dollarama. I'm here in Canada, I get them at the, the Dollarama, and when they get raunchy, I just throw them out. But I do find that on the Plexi on my desk, the monomer, the gel residue, the acetone, all of those things leave a residue on my desk. And it's just so much nicer to have one of these. They don't mark up that easily. It takes a while for them to get a little in. Um, I use the compressed air, blow them off, wipe them down, and they're good to go again. So this is something that if I have some nail art, if I have some glitter that I'm gonna sit down and I know I'm gonna be anchoring and I'm gonna be pushing on it, I will use this because things don't slide around as much as on the Plexi. So that is my first thing. I know you can get other sizes at other places. I'm sure you can get them at Walmart and Dollar Tree and all the other kind of dollar stores, cheaper stores, craft stores, Michaels, I'm sure. So the next thing is my tile. So it's just a cast off tile from a friend's reno. Um, I use this if I'm mixing a gel color or if I'm using my uh, stripey brush, my line brush, and really want to drag out the polish to make it as thin as possible on my brush for a thin, thin line, I'll use this. But I don't just use this because it's easy to clean and you know all the other benefits to it. I do also use this because it's chilly. And if you do any nail art at all, certain gel polishes, certain gel paints, uh, I find especially potted gels, will get not as cooperative if they're warm. And I find with this being chilled, it's almost always chilly. I just grabbed it out of my cart. It's not sitting anywhere that should be terribly cold. But with it being chilly, it keeps my gel a little bit chillier. So if you even know that your room is really warm, maybe in the summertime or if the heat's been on too high, whatever, or if you live in New Brunswick and it's like plus 20 and minus 20 within the same day, you could set this somewhere. I have a a really deep windowsill here. I could set it there and cool it off. So that's another trick to this is that it is chilly. You could probably just go to a Home Depot or a local hardware store and get a cast off tile. I'm sure that they would probably just give it to you. If not, they can't be very much money. Okay, 
There's so many things here. I'm just going to start with tools, I think. Accessories. These scissors. I, got, I don't know where I got these. I thought Can West. I believe I bought these at Can West. If you've purchased them, let me know. But these aren't the ones that I, you know, clean with my implements or anything like that. These are like scissors that hang out in the mason jar that hold my big scissors, my spare pen, my pencil. I'm looking because I can see it right here. A random birch wood stick. It's hard to say. It's probably stirring something with it. Um, and a nail art brush that I've never opened. I'm not sure why it's there. But these hang out there. I use them to cut foil, um, cut paper, not careful with them. These aren't my good, good ones. I have a really good pair that I would never dream of doing all those things to. But I do have this pair kind of for spare. So that's those. I'm trying to stab myself with them. My other tool, I still keep it in its case. How many of you people keep your, you people, honestly, how many of you guys keep yours in your case? My crystal katana. So it is your, oh, look at those nails. Oh my gosh, don't, don't look at those nails. This is the crystal picker upper. I always bought the four for 99 cent white pencils off of eBay. Um, but I had a coupon one day and I was at Michael's, so I picked myself up one of these. I really love it. I use it quite a bit for my crystals. So it is what it is. And it comes in this cute little, Case, which I do keep it in. I mean, I make dust for a living, so I try to keep stuff in its cases if at all possible. The next thing is these guys. If you've watched any of my favorite videos, you've definitely seen these guys before. They're micro swabs, 1.5 millimeter. I've purchased them off of either eBay or Amazon. I get thousands of them at a time. I don't order them very often at all. Kind of hard to see. Um, most of you have probably seen these. A lot of you guys do lashes, so you end up using the micro swaps for those. But I use these for, you're doing this little specific nail art. Your client says something funny and you look up and when you look back, you realize you've dotted your brush back on the nail and there's this little dot of like black gel paint on a white nail on a design where it doesn't need to be, how are you gonna wipe that off? You're not. But if you grab one of these, you can kind of just twist it off of there. Easy peasy, good to go. I also used to use them to stir stuff before I got, before I got this. So this is my artistic nail design. It was a gel brush. Don't like the brush, really don't like the brush. I don't know, maybe I'm doing something wrong with it, but. I only tried to use it once and I don't like the brush at all. So I got this from Maritime Beauty, but I do love the paddle. So this stays right out in that mason jar I was talking about. I love that paddle. Love that for stirring stuff. It's become the new stirrer because it was using, we're using the micro swabs. Listen to me. I'm like a redneck. Okay, brush holder. This is where I set my acrylic brush when I'm like getting all of my stuff out because I have a Valentino now so I don't lay it directly in front of me on the piece of paper towel like I used to. I'm using this. This used to live in my drawer and that is what my brush stayed on in my drawer. Now it lives on top of my desk but I do use it when I'm doing nail art if I have my brush loaded up with color and I need to lay it down. I use this. eBay. It was a couple of dollars. It's, you can tell it was a couple of dollars. It's not amazingly well made, but you know, it's holding up to the monomer and it's holding up to everything I put it through. So we're good. So my next thing to talk about, um, the, these little silicone tools. So this one popped off the end. That was like my favorite end. And I obviously used it too much and it popped off. Now I know this looks like I haven't cleaned it and that's not it. This is my old one. When that popped off and I started using my new one, I stashed this one. I tend to do that. If I need this for some random God knows what, I'll dig it back out and use it. Probably end up in the garbage afterwards. But that is my random one. This is my new one. The case is a little dusty. But it has the pointier end and the flat end. Love it. Use it for in around the cuticles. Use it for nail art. Use it sometimes for cutting acrylic. I don't often do that, but 
it is something I've done before. My next thing is a Slim Simply Simmons brush. Um, you get them at Michael's. They are an artist's brush. This one looks horrific. It's my older, um, like they go from a gel polish brush to a glitter brush and then they go from a glitter brush to the garbage. This one is so near the garbage you have no idea. Um, but I use it for my leaf gels because those leaf gels, they just leach into a gel brush and they will stay there for I feel like forever. So that's what I'm using this for and you can see the leaf gel on it. Anyway, but I do love this brush. We'll purchase another one. Michaels. This, you can see the glitter in it. I was just using it. This is a great little guy. This was a Valentino Kalinske number 10 acrylic brush. Ordered it off of eBay years ago. Got it. I don't know, didn't like the look of it at the time. So I use it for loose glitter. So polish, gel polish, cure, loose glitter on your dispersion film. Look at the glitter go. On your dispersion film, this is what I'm using. Then I spray um, a towel down with alcohol and wipe it all off, set it up to dry. I have a couple that I use for things like this, but this is my main one and I do love it. It's great for loose glitter. Speaking of loose glitter, eBay. This is my favorite. I call it mermaid glitter. It is an iridescent glitter. This one's not opened yet. I buy five or six of them at a time and I dump them into a old glam and glitz acrylic. After dark acrylic, because I go through a lot of that. The after dark acrylic. Uh, love the size of the jar. So I dump them in there. I keep refilling them. I use a lot of that. I don't know how I just get into that glitter considering I was doing brushes, but anyhow. These nail swatches. You know, I just did a comparison video, artistic versus ugly duckling, and I used these. I didn't think I liked them when I first got them. I must have ordered them by mistake because they've got three tiers to them. Um, didn't think I'd use them through the minute drawer, but doing that comparison video, I really did use them. So I dug them back out. They've got the ring with them. They were eBay, Amazon, maybe eBay, I'm sure. Um, 50 of them in a pack, I think I got 200, which I usually do when I'm ordering that sort of thing. Mind you, I haven't ordered anything like that for quite a while because all this tariff stuff, and I don't know about shipping to Canada, like I don't know where we're at there. I'm probably going to start buying more through like my Amazon Prime, so I just don't have to worry about it. It just comes to me and they do their thing, and it is what it is. Okay, so. First, let's... First, let's talk about these guys. Rings. Like pierced rings. We used to use them years ago. Those are gold. I don't know. I think I'll start using them again. I did try it on myself and I used this drill bit to make the hole and it's really cool. I, I got this drill bit off of eBay. I was looking for something to do those holes with. So I ordered like a cuticle drill bit. I'm not going to use this as a cuticle drill bit, but I'm using it to drill the hole in the nail for the ring. Okay, so next on the list is going to be nail art brushes. So first thing, my daughter tool. I think we've all seen these. I got these from eBay years ago and I'm still using them. Actually, the only one I keep close to me is this green one. It's got a medium sized on one end and super small on the other and this is the one I kind of use the most. Um, I don't really use the other sizes of them. I just never really got into using the other sizes of them. So swirly, these, okay, these are the, <laughs> hello. These are the Selena Ryden Light Elegance, Selena Ryden Signature Brushes. Um, they are amazing. I love them. So this is swirly. So they have a cover, then they open up. Swirly is kind of the medium size. There's stripey, which is longer. I get the most use out of stripey, to be honest with you. If I could just purchase, if I could purchase them 
uh, one at a time. Like if you could purchase them separately, stripey. So this last one is shorty. There. So those you can see. I don't at all regret buying them. I love them. But like I said, if I could buy them separately, I would certainly buy stripey. I'd like to know what your guys' favorite nail art brushes are because life's great with good nail art brushes. I love good nail art brushes. So speaking of, my Ugly Duckling Detailer 2. There we go. I use this a lot. So that's another one. Um, foil, right now, foil all the way. Foil, foil, foil. I dug out two. I have a whole drawer full of them. They are all from eBay. By the way, all those brushes I just showed you are from Kim West. Um, these are all from eBay. I may have gotten a new rose gold from Amazon. I don't buy them through a distributor because I tend to buy them at 2 a.m. when I'm searching through eBay. Um, I probably will start buying them through Amazon. Again, this tariff thing I'm really not sure about, but I love it. I use it on top of gel color. Foil right now on top of a color with matte top coat. Okay, so I do, my favorite is a black nail whatever color foil, regular top coat on top of that to hold it all together, then Ugly Duckling matte top coat, snowmobile, wheeler, on top of that to make it all matte, oh, that is my favorite look right now. I absolutely love that. I just get obsessed with a look and then everybody gets it. Um, these little dots and spots and things, Love these little guys. I use them not as much as I use regular glitter, but they are nice to have these sorts of little things. Um, if you're just starting out and you're trying to like pick a list of what you should buy or what you shouldn't, I feel like this is a good starter list. Foil, sparkles, a couple of good brushes. You don't need as many as I have by any means. Couple of good brushes. Check out the Ugly Duckling ones because you can buy them separately. Um, a little bit of glitter, a little bit of something different like the piercings. Um, and you're really quite good to go, I think. Now I just purchased this. I got way too much of it. But what ifs? And it is real, or as real as it gets, gold leaf. I've been using that a little bit as a foil too. It was kind of a novelty. Uh, there's enough of it here, seriously, because that's like little tissue paper and the gold leaf is really fine and like look at how much is here. I'll have this for the rest of my career, but that's okay. So those are my favorite nail art things. Uh, oh, one more thing. Glasses, safety glasses. These are just clear glasses that I got off of Amazon, I think. They don't have any prescription in them. They're just, they, okay, so seriously, most of the time they do my hair which is getting done today, which is why it looks like this. So just bear with me. But anyway, these glasses normally I do my hair with. They're like a little headband, I love them. But when you're using your nippers or using a drill bit, an old drill bit, don't use a new one, to remove rhinestones, they can fly all over the place. So think about it. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you do, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell, ask me some questions. Comments can go on forever. I would love to chat with you. Have a good week.